In the previous videos of this series, you have seen how to use Lab1Q to define your experiments and shape your pulses. Building on that, we will be looking at some further technicalities in order to define your experiments in even more detail. Hi, my name is Thomas, and today we will be looking at sweeping and averaging in Lab1Q. So, for this tutorial, I already prepared a notebook with the necessary imports of Lab1Q as well as some helper functionality. Let's take a look at sweeps first. In Lab1Q, sweeps are represented by so called sweep parameters. The simplest one is the linear sweep parameter, which you can simply define in terms of a starting point, a stopping point to define the range, as well as the number of samples with the count variable. Sometimes it's also handy to give this sweep parameter a name. Let's quickly take a look and plot this. And indeed, we can confirm here that this X corresponds to a linear sweep. Now, in most of your experiments, the sweeps you will use will be linear like this. However, the sweep parameter base class allows you to define literally any kind of sweep function. And this is shown here. So you use the base class and you provide the values directly as an array. This is shown here to reproduce our previous example, but the values you provide can be literally anything. Now, the really nice thing about sweep parameters is actually that you can do arithmetics with them. That means you can derive a new sweeping parameter by applying mathematical operations to an existing one. This is shown here. We use the sweep parameter we defined first and feed that to a cosine function. What we get is this new cosine sweep shown here. And we plot this, we can confirm that this is indeed a cosine function. Let's take a quick look at what this new sweep parameter contains. You will find here the values, which is simply an array of the values we sweep over, our cosine function in that case, but it also contains the sweep parameter it was originally derived from, and that is quite handy if you are dealing with more complex sweep functionality. So now that we have seen how to construct sweeps, how do we actually use them? In Lab on Q, an experiment consists of a sequence of pulses, which are inside a nested structure of sweeping and averaging loops. We will demonstrate the different behaviors of such sweeps based on three examples three different Ramsey experiments. The first Ramsey experiment consists of two pi half pulses, which are separated by a delay. And the final state is measured afterwards. And as part of the experiments, we simply sweep the delay time between these two pulses. Before we begin with that, let's define the pulses we need for the experiment. First, I use lamb on -Q's pulse library to describe the pi half pulse as a drag pulse, as shown here. And then we need a readout pulse and an integration kernel, which are simple Gaussian square functions. Next, we need to define the sweep parameter we're actually using in this experiment. Again, this is a linear sweep, and we just provide the accurate timings in terms of microseconds, as shown here. Then we are ready to look at our experiment. It consists of an acquire loop outside. We will look into the details of that later. And inside of this loop, we actually have our sweep where we provide the sweep parameter itself. Then you can see here the Ramsey sequence. So there's the first pi half pulse shown here. In between, there is the delay, which contains again our sweep parameter. And afterwards, we play the second pulse. This is followed by a measurement section where we simply read out the final state of the qubit after this Ramsey sequence. We will not run this experiment directly here, but rather we will just look at the pulses which are generated by the compiler. And as you can see here from this plot, you will see these two pulses which are increasingly separated as the sweep progresses. You can also see here the measurement pulse itself. In our second Ramsey experiment, we do not only vary the delay between the two pi half pulses, but also their relative phase difference. However, we want to keep a constant ratio between the delay time and the phase difference. 
So in order to do that, we create a second sweep parameter as shown here, simply by defining it as a multiple from the delay sweep parameter we used before. And now we can look again at our experiment. You will see again the same Ramsey sequence here. However, it now contains an increment of the oscillator phase where the Ramsey phase sweep is used. And we now provide the two sweep parameters into the sweep context in form of a list as shown here. And this ensures that they are executed simultaneously. We can now define this experiment, compile it and look at the simulated pulse sequence. And as you see here, the time between the two pi half pulses grows as the sweep progresses. And you can also now see the relative phase difference changes based on the relative amplitudes of the I and Q components as visible here. The third example Ramsey experiment is part of the so-called cryoscope method, which seeks to determine pulse distortions due to line impedance. I won't go into details here. The paper is linked below and just focus on the essentials. This experiment consists of two pi half pulses, which are now separated by a fixed delay. And in between these two pi half pulses, we play a pulse on the flux line. This changes the frequency of the qubit itself in between this Ramsey sequence. And as part of the experiment, we will sweep the amplitude as well as the length of this flux pulse. So in order to do that, we start here by defining the fixed delay time as well as the length sweep and the amplitude sweep for the flux pulse. We also define the flux pulse here, again using the pulse library of lab on q Now let's look at the experiment itself. The first thing we have to do is extend the list of experimental signals by the flux line, which is simply shown here. Then we have here our nested sweep structure. The outer sweep is over the amplitude of the flux pulse, while the inner one is over its length. You then see here the Ramsey sequence, now with the fixed delay time. And we inserted here another section for playing the flux pulse. The flux pulse itself is following a delay as shown here. And this delay ensures that the pulse, pulse is played exactly in between these two pi half pulses. And then compiling the experiment and looking at the simulated pulses, you see here that indeed for the flux pulse, the length grows over the first four steps of the sweep. And afterwards, another step of the outer sweep is taken and its amplitude increases. We quickly zoom in into this pulse sequence and indeed see here that the flux pulses are ending up in between the two pi half pulses. Now that you have seen how to construct and use sweeps, let's focus on the acquire loop RT, which we have been using in all of our experiments so far. So this determines how data is sampled, how it's averaged and how it is acquired. The first option here simply determines the number of samples and it's simply given as an integer to the count variable. The second option is the acquisition type. The first option here is raw and it simply provides the time resolved measurement data from the quantum analyzer unit. The second option, spectroscopy, is typically used to measure a resonance spectrum of a qubit, for example. The third option is integration. It directly integrates the signal which comes from the quantum analyzer unit with a kernel provided. And it also allows for things like a multiplexed readout of the qubit states. The next option is the averaging mode, which simply determines how the data is averaged. The first option here is single shot, which does no averaging at all. Then there is the cyclic mode, which basically goes through an entire sweep before moving over to the next sample. Then we have the sequential averaging mode, which basically goes over all the samples and averages before moving over to the next sweep step. In this case, cyclic averaging is the default simply because it allows you to easily average out temporal drifts. The last option is the repetition mode, which we will demonstrate 
based on the Ramsey experiment we have been using before. The first mode here is fastest, which means lab on queue will compress each sweep step as much as possible in order to ensure the shortest runtime. As you can see here, if we execute this experiment, we will end up with a very compressed Ramsey sequence. So the last pulse of the previous step uh, overlaps with the first pulse of the next step. And the difference, of course, between the steps will grow. So while this gives you the fastest runtime of the experiment, this may be not the best choice because it uh, this allows the quantum analyzer unit to use loop structures inside and you may quickly run out of memory. To overcome that, the second option is repetition mode constant, for which you have to set a repetition time. And this will simply run all the sweep steps with that given repetition time. As shown here, we now end up with rather long uh, Ramsey sweeps and of course the pulse sequence in between here. The third option is repetition mode auto and it will simply take the longest sweep step of that experiment and set a constant repetition time to all other sweeps. And by doing so, this ensures the shortest runtime of the experiment at constant sweep step, step length. Now this concludes today's video. I hope you learned now how to use LabOnQ's sweeping and averaging options to define the experiments precisely as you need them. If you want to know more, check out the manuals, the tutorials, our notebooks, as well as the other videos of this series. Finally, we at Zurich Instruments love to hear from you, so if you have any further questions, please reach out to us.